Right, so these guys. Uh, let's see. I suppose we should get ourselves ready for battle. Um, star power is dangerously low. Supercharge, how about that? Just wallop them to death, I suppose. Oh, we also have to tattle them too, because I guess I didn't do that back um, in Shy Guy's toy box. Deadly guy. That's pretty fitting. 50 HP, attack power 10, defense 0. Attack power 12 if they do an acrobatic move. So these guys, if they all attack me, they could kill me in a single turn. Even if you guard them correctly. Yes. See, this battle. This battle took me 10... Perhaps even more turns. Now the tricky thing is with this battle is that I'm not allowed to inflict any status effects on them. I can't paralyze them, I can't put them to sleep, I'm not allowed to time them out or anything, I can't freeze them. And that's because of the rules. I'm not allowed to use uh, Zap Tap or anything like that, so I can't give myself any status effect like that, or I can't make myself invisible either. I'm not allowed to use um, Chill Out to make them weaker. So the only thing I can really think of to do is to make myself uh, hard to hit with that Cloud9 thing Lackluster has. But the problem with that is that it doesn't protect you perfectly, it just gives you like a better... it gives you some evasion sometimes. It'll still hit you even when you uh, have that Cloud on. But I've been doing that Cloud technique for the last few turns, and the only reason I was eventually able to win is by sheer luck. I've had turns they've taken me out all at once, even when I did have that cloud out. So I did this thing for ten times before I got this to work, so I guess- I hope you guys are happy with me over this, because... God damn! At some point it stops being about skill and it just turns out to be about luck. Hit them hard, hit them fast, and do as much damage uh, to them as you can while making it hard for them to hit you. See, that's the only thing protecting me from a very quick and painful death. A lot of what I had to do in this battle relied solely on faith, because I couldn't figure out any other way to defeat these guys within the, uh, the rules. And knowing me, Cloud9's probably against the rules, because... the person who issued that set of rules was evil. I don't know if you're still watching this, you, but I really hope you're happy. <laughs> no, I'm not mad. I'm just, uh... a little overwhelmed by all of this. But I am glad that this is over, because... Let's see, see, now the Cloud 9's off, so I have to switch back to, uh... I have to switch back to Lackluster in order to protect myself even further. And I have to make sure I hit this guy enough. So I have to use my Ultra Shroom here, because... Well, let's face it, I'm out of options. I need Lackluster to protect me. And then I have to hope. Just hope that will protect me long enough so that I can get a few more hits on them so I kill them before they kill me horribly. I'm not sure if it's a smarter idea to kill them all at once or to kill them one at a time. I went after them all at one at a time. See, right here, this is a faith decision. If this guy had managed to hit me, I would have died. And there's nothing I can do about that because I can't switch my badges to give myself any extra defense or offense or I can't inflict status effects on them. So I have to rely solely on faith that somehow I'm going to make it through all this. See, right here, I didn't know what else to do, so I have to make myself invisible just so I can give myself some more time to think. And then after that, I'm out of FP! God, this battle... What I personally did to avoid my uh, those attacks was to um, just evade as much as I could and then... God, um... I personally decided to go for the attack that takes them all out at once. It needs a lot of your FP, but I needed to do that. Not shield myself one more time. Which I guess was very much needed, because... Alright, so now we can protect ourselves against one more turn, or have ourselves protected for at least one more turn. But we're already down to 6 HP after I use an Ultra Shroom again. 
Alright, so... We're only allowed one Star Storm per chapter, but I feel like this is the time to use it. It's do or die. And I guess I'm out of options, so I'll just hope that none of them can connect their attacks against me. Because if this doesn't work, I'll have to fight them all over again. God, you have no idea how happy I was when this happened to me. I was so scared that wasn't going to work. I was angry. Let me tell you. God, I didn't need to do that either. I certainly didn't need to use that gem and jelly right there. Looking back, that's a huge waste of resources. I should have just attacked them singularly, but whatever. What's done is done. But yeah, that fight was based solely on luck. And I don't think I agree with that. It's not so much a challenge when you have to rely on luck to get something done. So if, the, if I ever do a challenge run of a game again, I'm going to speak to make sure that there's some skill involved at least. But yeah, what do you know? We defeated the anti-guys. They depleted our resources and brought us within a moment of our health, but we got them. You know, again, if Bowser were smart, he'd have these guys. He'd have those guys roaming all over the place. Forget the uh, the Koopa Troll or the you know the Magic Koopas. I would just have those guys roaming the area. You know what? I bet they cost a lot, though. He had to import them all the way from Shy Guy's toy box. It couldn't have been easy. They probably charged by the hour. But wait, what am I saying? Because Bowser can just wish them to exist, or wish them there and wish them- or just do like a mind control thing where he wish them under his control. If he wanted to, he could use that Star Rod to have everything that was around us, animate or inanimate, attack us. He could do like a Gygus thing where he, um, controls or possesses everything around us and then has like the stairs attack us or has, uh, the bricks individually attack us by throwing themselves at us. He could have the- he could possess the- uh, use magic to make the ground give way. Like a sentient, uh, trap door that would make us fall to our untimely demise as soon as we got near it. <sighs> <Get the sighs> Sorry, there's a bug on my screen I'm trying to get rid of him. Okay, I don't see him anymore. Okay! But jeez. Basically, any sort of plot or story that involves wishing can immediately be brought down to stupid, because no matter what happens, somebody out there will always be smart enough to think of a better wish. And that applies to any sort of, uh, fictional story that involves, uh, wishes. Either a genie, or a magical rod, or anything. Bowser doesn't have an excuse. He's not limited by three wishes. He's just dense. So, uh, let's see... I believe we want to go down here. Yep. Now, the last time we saw a path like that, it led... Ah, yep! Just what I was expecting. Another prison chamber. But hey, we might have another opportunity to rest. And if that's the case, we don't have to worry about holding back on this guy. Even though he didn't put up much of a fight, I mean, he had his back turned, and he didn't even notice me slamming my hammer to the ground. That hammer is noisy, it makes five different sounds whenever I do anything with it. Man, everyone around here is incompetent. Penguin! Aw, oh, poor thing. Aw. Yeah, this guy didn't do anything wrong. Neither did any of the party goers. Okay, we have to stop Bowser. It's official now. For the penguins. Hello. Really? So the four of you guys been in, have been in this prison cell for years? It has to have been years if we're going by Let's Play time. You guys have been in here for two years. Um, I'm sorry. So you guys haven't seen another single individual person. I wonder why they do it in groups of four. And I wonder why every prison cell has a guard with a spear. You'd think they'd disarm them. 
Bowser is absolutely asinine, isn't he? Other than that, he has the worst guards in history. But it managed to work until I got here, so maybe not. Maybe they're humoring the guards. Maybe those are just toys. Like, if they swing them at something, they'll just make a squeaking sound. They probably don't even do anything. Well, that's that. Getting a rest. Good to go. Oh, maybe that guard is, uh, maybe that guard's a tough guy, and he actually managed to forge a spear out of the things in the prison cell. Like, maybe there were, uh, like, tables there originally, and he, uh, broke the pieces apart to make a new spear for himself. That'd be kind of clever. Shame those guys aren't fault. those guards aren't following us. That'd be kind of sweet to have, like, an entourage of, uh, toad guards following quite along. Oh, well. As I said, they're better off guarding the civilians. And to be fair, that penguin should be well guarded at all times. So let's see here. Whoa, that was cool! I bounced on top of his, uh... bone to get to him. That's classic Mario moves right there. Alright, let's see. Red switches mean temporary. So, let's see if we can figure this out. Perhaps if we stand down here... Aha! Simple enough. And again, because they're temporary, they don't stay up, so... Yes? Okay. They don't stay... Ooh, nice! That'll make up for the one we lost last time. Huh. I like how, uh, Bombetta is just sort of freeze-framed in the air like that. That's kind of cute. And fun. I like that about games, especially old N64 games. They were very, uh... Very guilty of that, where if you pause the game or if you do anything in the background, everything else around you freezes. You see that a lot in uh, Mario games or, um... Yeah, like Super Mario 64, where you stop to read a sign and everything else stops around you. That sort of thing. Classic. Aha! Another one of you. Alright, very good. Good, we're on, uh, we're making good time here. Let's see. Uh, oh, another locked door. I don't suppose you can solve my problems, can you, Vomat? Nah, probably not. I'm not even going back to check. I know it's not going to work. I hope Vomat's cooled down since the whole Crystal Palace thing. I know she was mad earlier, but I think she's gotten over it. She sounds pretty happy, if anything else. Pretty satisfied to be blowing things up again. Ooh. Okay, we'll get you too. Yeah, those anti-guys. It would make so much more sense if those guys were just roaming the place. But, you know, they're shy guys, so they're all whimsical and childish. I bet if they actually ran this place or were uh, in control of this place, this place would be a lot more like Shy Guy's toy box. Or maybe they'd have their own wing. Sort of like that thing that, um, like Zelda, um, I mean, Ganondorf uh, Final Dungeons have, where um, they have separate wings where, like, uh, separate wings dedicate themselves to previous dungeons. Like, there'd be a wing separate for, uh, Shy Guy's Toy Box, and a wing separate for, uh, Boo's Mansion or Gusty Gulch. Anyway, we go back here for a quick rest, because the resource is available and it's free. But yeah, you don't actually see that in this game, or most, uh, Mario games, actually. Usually it's just a dungeon crawler. And a completely illogical one at that, because Bowser has absolutely no idea of tactics. So that, uh, those torches in the background, those are important. Now what's gonna happen is, we're gonna be entering this section of dungeon right here, where those torches actually tell you which way you're supposed to go. Like, the first torch was up, so we're supposed to go up, but the second torch was down, so we're supposed to, uh, we're supposed to go down. And every time you go through these chambers, there's an identical chamber, uh, near it. If you screw it up and go through the wrong pathway, then what happens is that you're brought back to the start of this area and you have to start all over. So this is actually kind of clever, if you ask me. Um, if they didn't have that cheat sheet there up front, Mario would have no way of knowing this, and he'd be lost in here for weeks. There's like separate different passages you'd go through here, so it takes a lot of different iterations. Weeks might be stretching it a bit, but Mario would be tired and exhausted after going through there. It's pretty clever, actually. Now, if only you didn't have that cheat sheet up there, that'd be the probably one of the best defenses you have. 
I like this room for some reason, although it looks a bit dangerous. There's no guardrails or anything, so if you fall up, if you flop over the side, that's it. Mario isn't supposed to be in here. This is supposed to be for the uh, workers and uh, guardsmen. So, this place is anything more dangerous to Bowser's own men than it is to us. But hey, whatever. It's sort of hard to question him at this point when he keeps making terrible choices. Meanwhile, as we sort of pancake these enemies and just go straight through here. I believe that's it for this episode, though. There's a bit more uh, stuff to do in this castle, but we're getting there. Until then, everybody, stay tuned and good night.